Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the Corset 2019 set review for Black. So we've done white, we've done blue, let's get on to black here. With Abnormal Endurance, a 2 mana instant. Until end of turn, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 and gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Basically, supernatural stamina for one more mana. Uh, not terrible, not bad. Um, I think this card is actually quite good in draft and sealed, uh, but probably won't see any kind of standard play thanks to supernatural stamina. And when that card rotates, this card might take its place. However, two mana is, you know, a lot more than one mana in that particular format. So very good card if you get into it in your if you're in black in draft and sealed. Moving up here, we have Blood Divination, four mana sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature, draw three cards. Really, really like this card, especially in black for draft and sealed. This card might honestly see some play in, uh, in standard, thanks to how powerful it is. Drawing three cards for just sacking a creature, not terrible, especially if you're in, into a Hidden Stockpiles deck or a Cleric deck or something where they have a lot of tokens on the battlefield. Blood Divination is honestly not bad at all in those kind of, uh, like, archetypes. I think this card is super good. Um, it might, might be a pretty, like, you know, mid to high pick for you if you're any more, like, tempo or slower based a deck in Draft and Sealed. Moving up here, we have Bog Stomper. Love the art on this guy. Six mana, six five, vanilla. Super good, very good top end card for you, good bomb if you're into this card as a common in uh, Draft and Sealed. I'm probably going to go pretty quickly because of how powerful it is. Um, even though it's just a vanilla, it is just a nice, you know, kind of uh, uh, consistent attacker for you uh, in Draft and Sealed. Not going to see any kind of standard play, but that's alright, we'll see this guy in Draft and Sealed all day long and uh, love it. <laughs> also love the, uh, the, the flavor text here. They are gentle herbivores, despite their size, approach cautiously and hum a tune to let them know you mean no harm. <laughs> <laughs> Very dorky. Moving up here, we have Bone Dragon. This is our first mythic in black here. Five men of 5 4 flyer. You can pay five, exile seven other cards from your graveyard, and return Bone Dragon from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Interesting ability here. I like this card. Um, you probably won't see this in Draft and Sealed because it is a mythic. As far as standard goes, it's kind of okay. A five men of 5 4 flyer is not terrible. Uh, in standard, and the ability to kind of return it uh, in the mid to late game is, is pretty good as well. There is a lot of uh, like graveyard hate right now in the format, so this is a card that uh, kind of sits in your graveyard for a long time, giving your opponent the ability to kind of scavenger grounds or you know exile it with a crooked combination or whatever. So I think this card is probably not going to be as impactful in draft and sealed or in uh, in standard, but I do think in uh, like commander and I do think in draft and sealed, this card would just be a huge house uh, if you get into it as your rare. Moving on here, we have Child of Night. Haven't seen Child of Night in a while here. A 2-mana, two 2-1 two lifelinker. Super good, super straightforward, and to the points. Love Child of Night. Wish we saw Child of Night more, honestly. Um, one of my favorite black cards when I was first getting into Magic, around like the Innistrad kind of block, that kind of thing. Um, really love this card a lot. I think this card is super powerful in uh, Draft and Sealed. It is a 2-1, so it's going to probably just trade into that. Um, but it has lifelink, so you do get some life off of that. Uh, draft and Sealed, or, or Standard, rather. You won't see this in Standard at all, but in Draft and Sealed, you'll see this all day long. I'll be picking it highly all day long for my common slot in Draft and Sealed. Moving on here, we have Death Baron, a 3-mana 2-2 two -two zombie wizard. Skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus and plus one and have death touch. This is the zombie lord we've always wanted, honestly. Um, this card is super good for standard and I cannot wait to build a zombie travel deck around this guy. Super good card overall. If you get this as your rare and draft and steal, you might want to start pitching into a zombie list uh, for that archetype. Um, but, you know, it is kind of just a 3-minute 2-2. Two -two. Otherwise, if you get into it as your rare and draft and sealed, so you might want to pass on to it if it's your pack 3 or pack 2 rare, uh, depending on what kind of colors you're into. Uh, but if you get into zombies or skeletons or whatever, skelly mans, uh, this card is crazy good and super impactful to your board state. Especially giving up death touch, that's just insane, man. That's so good. This card is going to see play all over every format forever and ever if you're playing a zombie deck. Moving on here, we have a Demon of Catastrophe, 4 mana 6-6. Six, six. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature flying and trample. This card is also super, super good. Um, very, very good card for us. A 4 mana 6-6 six, six is nothing to sneeze at. It has flying and trample, and all you have to do is sack a creature. This card is totally worth it. I can tef definitely see a Demon style deck coming out in the near future uh, for um, standard for sure. Uh, if you get this as your rare in Draft and Seal, this card is amazing. And if you uh, continue to kind of draft into black, this card is just a huge win or a huge bomb on top of your board state. So, really, really like this card a lot. I can't wait to play it in Draft Sealed and Standard. It's just so good. Moving up here, we have Diagraph Ghoul Zombies once again. A 1-mana 2-2. Two -two. Enters the battlefield tapped. So, a 1-mana 2-2 two -two is not bad at all in Draft and Sealed. Um, and also in Standard, if you want to build a uh, zombie deck. 
Entering the battlefield tapped is a little annoying after turn one or two, um, but you know, it's okay. It's not gonna like, you know, be a huge drawback. I wish it had something where it was like, you know, can it can return itself, but this is a decent reprint for us. Um, love Diagraph Ghoul. And uh, yeah, it's still at the uncommon slot. I feel like it should probably be at the, ra the uh, common slot, not the rare slot, at the common slot, but you know, you know, so it's, it's okay. Moving right along, we have Doom Dissenter. This is a card from Amoncat, I believe. A two mana one one, when it dies, create a two two black zombie creature token. Um, another good card for us for the zombie list in standard. A decent card for us as well in draft and steel because it can be a great blocker as well as create another blocker once it dies and it's even stronger. So I really like the Doom Dissenter in draft and steel. I think this card is super good at being able to kind of uh, hold up blocks for you as well as kind of get in some extra damage because they don't want to make a 2 2 in the like, early game of the match. So Doom Dissenter is just an all around decent card for you and a great pick at common slot in draft and seal. Moving up here, we have Duress, a typical card uh, for the course that to be reprinted. A one mana source for your target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non land card. Or, yeah, non-creature, non-land card from it. Sorry, that that player discards that card. There we go. A little tongue twister there. Uh, Duress is always really, really good uh, in standard, so it's going to see a lot of standard sideboard play against control matchups. As far as draft and sealed, I'm really not excited to see a lot of like hand hate uh, in the main board of my decks in draft and sealed. But this is a probably a card you'll pick into and put it into your sideboard. And if your opponent has a ton of removal, that's when you bring in Duress. The main goal of draft and sealed is really to uh, just play out a tempo or aggro based strategy and try and out tempo your opponent. But Duress is super good. Good, uh, regardless, uh, getting rid of those you know one or two removal spells that your opponent might have. Moving up here, we have uh, Epicure of Blood. Is that how you pronounce it? Epicure? I'm not really sure if that's how you pronounce it correctly. Five mana, four for Vampire. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Uh, we had a similar card in, I believe, Oath of the Gatewatch or Battle for Zendikar, one of these, those kind of sets. I think it was a black-white card. This card's okay. It's a great bomb for you in the uh, like four for five mana slot. I uh, wish it had flying. It feels like it should have flying because it is a vampire and he looks like he's kind of flying, but he's not and it's a little annoying. Um, so this card is probably a build around kitchen table card for brewing uh, in standard. Uh, might be a cool card for a brawl deck or a commander deck. Um, for draft and sealed though, a 5 mana 4-4 four, four is just fine and that's, that ability is kind of just a side sidebar or kind of a um, side effect of it being a 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. So kind of pick it in the mid to low. It is a common, so you're going to see it quite often. Um, and if you need a big attacker, here's one for you. Moving on here, we have Fell Specter, a 4 mana 1 3 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, and whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses 2 life. So that is actually an ability that kind of happens over and over again, uh, which means this card might be pretty good in a mono black like discard deck in standard, um, making your opponent lose 2 life, and also having a 1 3 flyer for us. Um, so I really like that ability. Your opponent's already going to lose 2 life when this enters the battlefield thanks to its own ability, so it's losing 2 life, they're losing a card. Super good for me. Um, and just being a 4 mana and 1-3 flyer is okay as well in draft and sealed. So it's kind of a card that has a lot of good utility all around, especially in the mid to late game where they have like giant bombs in their hand or giant removal in their hand. And uh, yeah, you just want to use Fell Spectre and just kind of deal with it. Very good card for that. Moving on here, we have Frame Omnipotence, a five minute sorcery rare. Each opponent or each player loses half their life, then discards half the cards in their hand, then sacrifices half the creatures they control, round up each time. Um, this card is stupid. It's such a weird pox card. I, uh, I'm not really sure if this will see any kind of play whatsoever. It's definitely a kitchen table flavor kind of win card here, uh, for like standard if you want to build around that. I feel like this card's going to see a lot of play in like Commander and Brawl for sure, because it's just kind of one of those cards that does that, where it just kind of affects everybody randomly. And that's one of the best points of this card. As far as, uh, this getting into it as you're, you're like rare and draft and sealed, I would feel real bad for you. <laughs> it's a card you really don't want to use in draft and sealed at all. You probably just want to pass it. Um, but yeah, you're probably not going to see it that often because it is the rare. Uh, but this card is definitely kind of bonkers and silly uh, for standard brawl and commander. Moving up here, we have Gravedigger. Uh, old classic here. Four mana, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Super simple, straightforward. It's also a zombie, so it can be used in a zombie deck in draft and sealed. I like this card a lot because it gives you the ability to kind of get back a creature that died to like removal uh, in draft and sealed. I think that's fine. Um, this card probably won't see any kind of play in standard. Um, I think it's already in standard right now. I could be wrong though. But Gravedigger is also a very good card, just overall in draft and sealed at the four mana slot. Even though it is just a two two, just being able, being able to grab, make a creature, and also get something back from your graveyard, it's decent. Moving up here, we have Graveyard Marshal, a two black three two zombie soldier. You can pay three, exile the creature card from your graveyard, creating a tapped two two black zombie creature token. Super interesting card. Um, this is another card where it's like if you get into this in your in your rare and draft and sealed, you might want to go into zombies. Double black here is a bit you know much for this card, but making it a two two mana three two is pretty powerful by itself. And having the ability to in the mid to late game just create a bunch of zombies from the creatures that have already died the past turn, I think that, that's very very good. As far as this card being standard playable, I'm not sure. It's a little slow for me. 
Um, I think that you probably don't want to be doing this because it does create tapped tutus, so I don't know. We'll have to see as far as testing goes. I think this card is interesting for Brawl for sure. Commander would always be great for this card as, too, as well. Uh, but yeah, for standard, it might just be a little too slow uh, where it's at because, um, you know, you have you do have that one zombie though that pitches three cards into the graveyard, so this could be a good card to go along with that in standard, so we'll see what happens. Moving on here, we have Hired Blade, a three minute three two with Flash. Usually Flash is not on black. Very interesting card here. Um, I like this a lot for black, honestly. I think it's a good card to trade uh, whenever an opponent is attacking in on you uh, in draft and sealed, um, especially at the common slot. Getting flash on a common is very rare, I feel like. Um, not gonna see, not gonna see any kind of standard play, but for draft and sealed, this card is uh, super interesting. I like how it's a human assassin with flash. That's kind of perfect. Uh, very good card overall for draft and sealed. Moving on up, we have Infectious Horror. This is a four mana two two zombie horror. When Infectious Horror attacks, each opponent loses two life. Wish this was like a three three or a two three. That would be much better as far as uh, what the ability is asking for, because it's asking for you to attack out every single turn. Uh, your opponent does lose two life whenever you attack out with this card, which is great, and even better in Brawl and Commander with multiple opponents. Um, the problem, of course, is that it's only a two two, so it's going to be blocked by basically everything, and your opponent's probably only going to lose two life when it first attacks, and then it gets jump blocked and dies. Um, the art on this card is also like insane. Like the art on this card is crazy. I feel like it looks like a new Phyrexia style card. Like as far as the art goes, very interesting card, very like infectious looking art as far as uh, like how just en en enigmatic it looks and mysterious it looks. Love it so much as far as the art goes. Just very interesting and different from the rest of the set. But yeah, uh, Draft and Seal, this card's probably not that great uh, as far as being in your deck like, draft pool. Uh, in standard, it's not going to see any kind of play whatsoever. Moving up here, we have Infernal Reckoning. This is uh, a card that might see some modern play. One black mana instant. Exile target colorless creature. You gain life equal to its power. Um, I really like this card a lot. I think this card is super fun. Um, definitely can deal with a lot of Eldrazi, and it's showing in the actual uh, image here, like a demon crushing an Eldrazi. Um, here's a quote here from the flavor text. When these intruders are gone, Zindikar will be, will be my throne, my palace, my playground. So, <laughs> very interesting. Um, love this card for modern. I think this card is super good against an Eldrazi deck. As far as this being useful in like standard, really the only thing it hits is the like artifact decks right now, and that's really not enough as far as what you want to put into a standard deck. Uh, Fatal Push is still really good, Vrasis Contempt is still really good. Infernal Reckoning is okay, but you know, not really what you want to be looking into for standard. As far as uh, Draft and Sealed goes, goes, this card is probably just a big nothing. <laughs> if you get into it as your rare, you'd be like, oh sweet, I can use this for my modern deck, and then never use it <laughs> for your Draft and Sealed deck. So it's just another one of those cards where it's like, it's super, super narrow, uh, just like Isolate and White. Um, gonna be good in modern, but super, super narrow for Draft Sealed and standard, and probably not gonna see any kind of play in those formats. Moving up here, we have Infernal Scarring, a two mana enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has when this creature dies, draw a card. This card's usually always pretty good in draft and sealed. It's a good aura, being uh, able to give your a, a creature a nice bump, and when it dies, it basically replaces itself, which is good. So it's kind of a, a mid to or low to mid pick for me in draft and sealed. I'm not going to see any kind of play in standard, but that's all right. This card's okay regardless of that. Moving on here, we have a. Uh, uh, Isareth? I think that's how you pronounce it. Isareth the Awakener. This is a 3 mana 3 3 human wizard with death touch. And when it attacks, you may pay X. When you do return target creature card with a converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Um, this card is super interesting. I feel like this card might see some play in standard because it is a 3 mana 3 3. That's very, very powerful. In draft and sealed, if you get into this as your rare, it's a really good build around card in black. Again, the double black is one of those things where you kind of want to make sure that you have enough in the black like pool uh, for you to build around this card because uh, the double black is very important uh, to get into. But it's a three mana, th or it's a three mana three three death toucher. So just that alone makes it a super good card for draft and sealed. So I think we'll probably see a lot of play, or this card will see a lot of play in that particular format. I also feel like the ability, if once this card starts attacking in, if you have stuff in the graveyard, it's going to come right back, like turn over turn, and they have to deal with it. So it's a very very good bomb for you uh, in a rare slot in Draft and Sealed, and it might have a build around deck for you in a Standard as well. I like this card a ton. Might even see play in like a zombie list, um, depending on, you know, what the sideboard is for those kind of lists. Moving on here, we have Lich's Caress, a 5-minute sorcery. Your storage target creature, you gain 3 life. 
this card is just fine. I think this card is very good draft and sealed, like a removal spell in black. We always need like a destroy target creature card in black. And this card is perfect. Gain three life as well. Not gonna see any kind of standard play, but a very good card nonetheless for draft and sealed. Moving on here, we have Liliana Untouched by Death. Four mana, four loyalty. Legendary Planeswalker Liliana. This is our mythic Planeswalker in black. Plus one, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. If at least one of them is a zombie card, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Negative two, target creature gets negative uh, an X, negative X, until end of turn, where X is the number of zombies you control, and negative three, you may cast zombie cards from your graveyard this turn. You can use all of her abilities as soon as she hits the battlefield, and I think that is amazing. I think that's very, very good. Um, this card is definitely screaming, put me in a standard zombie deck. Same thing with um, maybe making this a commander in Brawl, or putting this in a command, or a, uh, yeah, commander in Brawl, or maybe even putting this in a commander deck in commander, or EDH, or however you want to say it. <laughs> I think this card is super good. If this is your rare in Draft and Sealed, very, very good card as well. The problem, though, is that you can't really do too much with this card if you don't have a lot of zombies in Draft and Sealed, so it can just be kind of a dead card uh, in that particular situation. However, I do think this card in Standard and even Modern, maybe, would be really, really good in a zombie tribal style deck. So, very, very good in that particular situation. Um, but besides that, not that great, honestly, in Draft and Sealed, so it kind of needs a lot more pieces. If you, if you can get into a lot of zombies in Draft and Sealed, then this card's going to be amazing if you have it. Um, if not, it kind of just does nothing, and that's kind of sad. Moving up here, we have Liliana's Contract, another great card, a great brew around card. Five mana enchantment. When it enters a battlefield, you draw four cards and you lose four life. That alone makes this card super good in Draft Sealed and even standard. I like all of that. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four more demons with different names, you win the game. So this basically means that I'm going to be making a demon deck as soon as possible uh, for standard. I think this card is super good with just the ability to draw four cards, lose four life. I think, that's, I think that is awesome. Um, now, in Draft and Sealed, this card's going to be really good for just, you know, gaining life or uh, drawing cards and losing life. That's fine. Um, but yeah, the actual like ability here to win the game with this, that's definitely a standard or modern style thing. Um, definitely something you want to brew around, and I'm sure Saffron Olive is already making a deck <laughs> that has this on it. Uh, but I'm going to try my hand at it too in the near future as well. Super good card for that. Moving on here, we have Macabre Waltz, a two mana sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and then discard a card. As we've seen with a lot of these like creature recursion, like sorcery spells like this, it's okay. It's not terrible. Um, it can be a little slow against a more aggressive opponent. So you kind of want to like see what your opponent's doing. And if your opponent's just you know smashing face all day long, this is kind of a card that if they have a lot of removal or if you're trading a lot, it might be good. Uh, but if they're just kind of smashing face, regardless of the creatures on your side of the field, then this card is kind of bad. If you're playing against a more control heavy opponent, then this card is just terrible. This card also won't see any kind of standard play whatsoever. So I think this card is okay if you get into it. If you need like a you know 15th or 16th slot in uh, like the last pick in your draft and sealed pool so this is fine for that uh, but it might just be sideboarded out immediately as soon as uh, you get a better creature for this slot here um, but again again if you're playing up against an opponent with a lot of removal or a lot of like load the ground creatures you might want to put this in just in case you can trade and that would bring back creatures back from the graveyard so that's fine for that moving up here we have mind rot a three minute sorcery target player discards two cards Ah, the old classic card. A good mid-range card for Draft and Sealed, especially if they have, you know, two to three cards in their hand in the mid-game, like turn six, seven, or eight. Um, use Mind Rot. They lose their entire hand. They lose all their momentum, and they're top-decking the rest of the game. Mind Rot is super good for that particular situation. Um, again, this might see some play in a standard, like, discard deck. There's always, like, a mono black discard deck going around in standard, and uh, that's just fine. Besides that, though, just a really good, like, common slot uh, discard spell for uh, Draft and Sealed. Moving up here, we have Murder. Nice. A three mana instant. Destroy target creature. Very, very good card. Highly sought after in draft and sealed. So not going to see any kind of standard play, but very good card nonetheless. I feel like you're going to see this a ton as far as um, being a high pick for people in black if you're if they're drafting into black. Double black though means you have to be fully into black uh, using this card though. So be very careful with that. But it, you know, besides that, it's very, very good. Instant speed destroy target creature for three mana. I'll take that all day long. Moving up here, we have Nightmare's Thirst. Love the art on this card. Mwah, super good. One black mana instant. You gain one life. Target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. A very interesting ability here. Um, makes me think that there's probably going to be an Orzhov or black-white deck in standard where life gain is like a huge like asset. This is a card that I feel like might be really, really good for that situation. Um, but besides that, in like draft and seal, this card kind of almost does nothing unless you have a lot of life gain stuff going on. 
where you can do like negative two, negative three on a single turn for this card. It's very situational, which means that it's probably not going to be as good as you think it's going to be in Draft and Sealed, so you might want to be passing it up. Uh, but for standard, if you get four copies of these into a deck list or two copies or whatever, it might be worth it if you're into a black, white, like a Johnny's Pride Mate style deck where you're getting a lot of life turn over turn. Moving right along here, we have Open the Graves. This is a five mana enchantment. Whenever a non token creature you control dies, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. This is basically an anti board wipe card. Super good for that in Draft and Sealed as far as a great card to replace your board state once they wipe you. Um, not going to probably see a lot of play in Standard. I'm really not sure if this card is worth it. It's a little expensive. That's the reason I'm saying this. Uh, if it was 4 mana, I feel like it'd be a lot better. 5 mana makes this a little uh, obnoxious. Uh, but there could be like a white black like sacrifice list somewhere where well, this card is really really good besides that though I really do think this card is uh, just okay probably gonna see some brawl and commander play uh, with like a zombie like a flavorful zombie list in those particular uh, Archetypes or formats um, Besides that though if you get this in your as your rare and draft and sealed again If you're like if this is like your second pack rare and you're in zombies This card might be good if you're not into zombies or not into black then just pass this card right up It's not worth kind of getting into a different color uh, just for this particular card here moving up here. We have a uh, uh, is it Phylactery? I think that's how you pronounce it. Phylactery Lich. This is a 3 mana 5-5 five, five zombie indestructible. As Phylactery Lich enters a battlefield, put a Phylactery counter on an artifact you control. When you control no permanents with Phylactery counters on, sacrifice a Phylactery... Well, that, this card, this card. Sacrifice the Lich. <laughs> Pronunciation, what is it? 3 mana 5-5 five, five indestructible is amazing. This is a really good bomb for you if you get into a lot of artifacts in draft and sealed. Um, this card is also super good and standard if you can get get a good deck worked around it. Um, there are a ton of artifacts right now in standard, and I feel like this card could be really good in a particular list somewhere. Maybe in like a um, a Rakdos list, a red black list uh, with like Belmont Courier, this card, and all those kind of things where there's just a bunch of attackers coming in really really quickly. Love this card a lot. Um, super super good. Uh, to me in that particular situation. Um, might see some Brawl and Commander play as well since it is a zombie, so it might be in a particular list like that. Um, besides that though, it's kind of bad if you don't get into a lot of like artifacts and draft and sealed. Um, it's kind of a card you might want to just pass up if you don't have two or three at least uh, into your draft pool for the Lich to actually kind of make sure that there is a, a counter on. So something to definitely look forward to uh, in Draft and Sealed if you get into a lot of artifacts, this card is amazing. But if not, just pass it right on up. Next up here we have Plague Mare, a 3 mana 2 2 Nightmare Horse. All these horses here. Plague Mare can be blocked by white creatures. Interesting. When Plague Mare enters a battlefield, creatures you control get negative 1, negative 1 into end of turn. What? Goblin Chain Weather 2.0. Hello, you were in black. <laughs> this, is, this is silly. Um, the good old MTG Double Down. Um, I like this card a lot. Uh, not being able to be blocked by white creatures is very, very good, especially because white has a lot of like low to the ground stuff that it can trade with this really easily. Um, the ability to do negative one as well is really good against white weenies too. So another card that I feel like will be a high pick uh, for black if you're in a black deck. I just think this card is great because it is creatures your opponent control and not just creatures on the field. So again, again one of those situations where it's like Goblin Chain Wheeler style deck. Uh, this card is very good for that situation. Um, the only thing I have that's kind of annoying of this is that it's a 2-2 two -two instead of maybe a 2-3. I think I would like it more as a 2-3. But, you know, that might be pushing it a little bit too far. Either way, it's high draft pick for me. High sealed pick for me. And probably we'll see some standard play because it is negative 1, negative 1 instead of just one point of damage. That negative 1 is way more important when your opponent has, like, heroic intervention or something like that on the battlefield where they can make their creatures indestructible and then Chain Wheeler just does nothing. This card does a bit more than, than what Chain Wheeler does uh, in that particular situation. Moving on here, we have a Ravenous Harpy, a 3-mana 1-2 flyer. Uh, that alone is probably pretty decent for Draft and Steel, but you can pay one, sacrifice another creature, and put a plus one, plus one counter on Ravenous Harpy. That's what pushes this card over the edge. This is probably a card you want to kind of build around uh, in Draft and Sealed to be able to be a huge attacker for you. Um, for standard, there might be a deck with this card kind of involved into it, but you know, having to pay the one here, it's not, Nan it's not a Nantuko Husk where you can just sack it for free. Um, having to pay the one here makes it a little bit slower, so not as impactful in standard. But I think in Draft and Seal, this card is going to be a huge bomb as long as you have enough creatures to kind of sack to it, making it a 2 2, a 3 3, and so on. Moving right along here, we have Reassembling Skeleton. This is a 2 mana 1 1 creature skeleton where you can pay one return Reassembling Skeleton from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Always a great blocker for you in Draft and Sealed. Not going to see any kind of play anywhere else, uh, but that's all right. He's a little skelly man here, and he's very, very good at being able to kind of come back turn over turn and uh, block for you. Next up here, we have Rise from the Grave, a 5 mana sorcery. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other types. Very interesting card. Um, I think this card might see some play in standard with like this a weird like um, like recursion deck. As far as that goes, 
like in draft and steal this card could be a huge bomb uh, because you could actually pick from a graveyard onto the battlefield so if your opponent has a huge bomb on their side of the field or in their graveyard you can grab it and turn it into your creature which i think is super good um so one of those cards where it's just going to be a great bomb for you in a very situational like like situation <laughs> situational situation exactly <laughs> but yeah in draft and steal this card is super good i'm um, not going to see much play probably in standard unless there's like a weird combo deck i'm not aware of for this card uh besides that though i think it's fine i think it's a useful card at uncommon moving on here we have a skeleton archer a four mana three three love the art on this card by the way thank you randy uh yargus i think it's how he's pronounced his last name uh very good art on this card skeleton archer when it enters the battlefield it deals one damage to any target um not great not terrible it can ping like a, a mana producer or something like that in standard so it won't see any kind of play for that particular situation but it can you know kill something on your opponent's side of the field like a child of night something like that um and you know three mana a four mana three three isn't like terrible either um could just be like a, a card to kind of end up at the um main phase two after combat your opponent has a creature that might die if it just gets one more point of damage then play the archer and pings it to death i think that's fine for this that particular situation moving on here we have sky march blood letter uh just a decent classic card here for us for draft and sealed three mana two two flyer when it enters the battlefield target opponent loses one life and you gain one life i'll take this all day long basically a one point life swing either uh, on both sides and a two two flyer forever i think this card is great for draft and sealed not gonna see any kind of standard play uh but this is definitely just a draft and sealed all-star moving on here we have sovereign's bite two and a sorcery target player loses three life and you gain three life um this card isn't that great honestly for draft and sealed it's one of those situations where it's like it's fine but it's a little slow and it doesn't really impact the board state at all so if your opponent is really ahead this card doesn't really do anything it kind of puts you slightly ahead with like life gain but it's really not something you don't want to be doing that often um as far as this card being good in standard i think this card might see some standard play in a weird like life gain life loss deck um, you also gain life with this deck or this card too. So this card could be a white black list in draft or in standard for like Ajani's pride mate, that kind of thing. So it's something to look out for more in standard. I feel like than it is for draft and sealed since you won't see too many of them. Um, we'll see what happens as far as how this card kind of ranks, uh, once the actual brewing or drafting actually starts happening. Moving on here, we have Stitcher's Supplier. This is the card I was talking about earlier, a one black mana, one, one zombie. When it enters the battlefield or dies, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Now I saw Tolarian talk about this card being a really good card for like dredge and modern. Um, probably because it does put six cards into the graveyard for just one mana. And that is, uh, that's kind of insane if your opponent does, you know, just kill it. The only other thing here is too is uh, in Draft and Seal, this card can definitely feed into a zombie strategy. A lot of recursion cards we have in black here as well. So I think this card is super good in that situation. In standard, it is a zombie also, so it can do a lot of good zombie stuff as, as well there. There's also a lot of really good recursion creatures like Dread Wanderer in the format and uh, Scrap Heap's Crown or stuff like that in standard. So this might see some standard play uh, in a deck. This might see some modern play even. I think this card is super good at the uncommon slot and uh, we'll definitely see play in a lot, a lot of different formats. Moving on here, we have Strangler Spores, a four mana instant. Target creature gets negative three, negative three into end of turn. Fantastic removal spell here. Not necessarily killing the creature outright, uh, but if it's a three, three, it has three toughness. It's definitely going to die to this card. Um, very, very good if your opponent gives it indestructible or it has indestructible, something like that. The negative three, negative three does kill it in that way. So this is uh, definitely a good card for Draft and Sealed. Won't see any kind of standard play. It's a little too expensive, but for Draft and Sealed, it's definitely a good removal spell. Moving right along here, we have two headed zombie, a four mana, four, two with menace. Um, this card it's definitely fine very very useful for us for draft and sealed i'm not going to see standard play but you know that's fine i think a 4-2 is great especially with menace on top of it, it makes it so your opponent basically has to trade two creatures for one and i think that's perfect moving right along here we have a vampire neonate a one black mana zero three you can pay two tap it each opponent loses one life and you gain one life i really feel like this card should be a zombie but you know the art makes it look like it should be a zombie but I guess not, you know? I feel like it should be a zombie, but uh, the life gain, life loss, that's more of a vampire thing, so I, I get it, but the art makes it look like it should be a zombie. Either way, a one mana, or one mana zero three is fine for Draft and Seal being a great blocker and being able to, on their incep, you know, have a one point life swing either way. It's pretty decent as well. Um, a great way for it to basically attack without really attacking. Um, in standard, though, really kind of uh, skeptical of this seeing any kind of play, uh, maybe in a black, white, life loss, life gain deck, um, but it is just a, just a zero three, so it might just do nothing and you might just want to use that mana for something else in standard so this is a card where it's like it's okay and draft and sealed at, at a one drop slot because it can block a couple turns uh, but besides that it really just does nothing unless you have nothing to do moving on here we have vampire sovereign a five mana three four flyer that's already fantastic right there i would already take that for draft and sealed but when it enters a battlefield each opponent or target opponent loses three life and you gain three life that makes it like amazing 
Um, kind of is like a Siege Rhino situation here. <laughs> I know a lot of people are going to be like, is this the new Siege Rhino? It's 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 kind of like that almost um, at the uncommon slot. I think this card is super good for draft and sealed. A great bomb for you to get into if you're in black. Um, this card might honestly see some standard play in a life gain life loss deck or a vampire deck. Just a 5 mana 3 4 flyer is already pretty decent. But having that 3 mana or 3 life uh, swing with uh, both ways where your opponent loses 3 and you gain 3, I think it just pushes it over the edge into a situation where this card is ridiculous. And the last card in black here for us we have the old walking corpse a two mana two two that's it it's a bear <laughs> feeding a normal army is a problem of logistics with zombies it is an asset feeding it is why they fight feeding is why they are feared very good card as far as just you know just a decent card for you in draft and sealed not gonna see any kind of standard play but that is perfectly fine but that is all the cards for black in corset 2019 i feel like black is probably one of the more powerful cards or more powerful colors in the format for drafting for sure there are so many powerful cards for like standard in the near future as well really like liliana to be in a zombie deck lots of good zombies here for us to build around uh, right now for the next three months because there are so many zombies in the format for standard um lots of stuff for brawl as well and uh, a lot of good pieces now for our commander for uh zombies and even demons now with that contract card um but that's it for the video guys like if you like it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already check back in for more for uh, more content like this in the near future i love you guys and i'll see you in the next video peace